How you doing, boy? I'm doing good. Listen, you know what? Mm -hmm. Before we let anybody tell us to stop talking to us and tell talking shit, what key you what key do you like to play blues? Oh, any key. Oh, wait I'm now. G, G is All right, well let's play let's play some blues. Key yeah. G, right? Key G. Go ahead. I'm gonna follow you. you no, I'll follow you because I'm, I'm gonna let you start it off. This just been played by that temple. Go ahead. What about I mean, you know, come on. I mean, for a musician, you know. I'd been watching Jamie Foxx's career. Uh, my first meeting with Jamie, I said, you know, this is a big undertaking. I've seen your acting. I think that, you know, you have great potential. But Ray Charles is also a brilliant pianist. And, you know, he's going to have to play in this. And I'll have to work things out where I get a piano player to play and I make it look like you're playing and so on. And he looked at me and said, well, you don't have to do that. I play the piano. I went to college for classical piano scholarship. So I said, yeah, that's, that's what I do. I play. In a moment, I went, I just kind of sat back and went, oh, my God. I wish I could tell you I knew it in advance and it was planned. It wasn't. So the next order of business was to test him. Well, we met right in this room. He was giving me everything. He hit the Thelonious Monk, he hit the classical piano. I was like, man, he plays it all. Yeah. Oh. Is that messing around? No. no just, now you were just messing around. <laughs> you do that, Jamie? Well, Ray is not easy, as I've said over and over again. He's a musician, and he knows what he's doing. Tougher. Come on, man. It's right under your fingers. Come on, man. Just eight, just eight bars, you know. And and I'm thinking, oh, this could really blow up in my face, you know. But Jamie, instead of wilting, saying, oh, I had enough of this, I'm not gonna be here walking, he just kept working it, working it, working it, and he got it. Yeah! He, he, I think the boy got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he got it. And you could see Jamie just kind of glow. He won the role right there from Ray Charles. <laughs> you can't do that around me, man. I hey, get, man. I get excited. I'm sorry. <laughs> At that moment, I think there was a spark in Ray Charles that said, this guy has got something inside. He's not going to cut and run. Hey, we're going to be all right. I'm going to take you out yeah. the road with you, man. Hey, hey, I thought, God, this is great. Jamie will get to spend time with Ray. And call Jamie. I said, go down. And he didn't do it. I kept calling back and saying, have you been down? No. Taylor was like, what's wrong with you, man? We did this thing, and Ray was there in the studio, and you didn't show up. I mean, and I said, I, if I, I'm like a sponge. If I get the old Ray, then uh, you know I won't be able to make the transitions, in a sense. So. And Jamie was right. I'm saying this as a director now working with an actor. He was thinking in terms of the young Ray. So what we did was we asked Quincy Jones to help us out. And we get this cassette tape, pop the cassette tape in, and we hear, hi, this is Donna Shaw from the Donna Shaw Show. This is such a special day for all of us. Kenny Rogers and, of course, Ray Charles. And then you hear, hello. You know, Donna, I, I am just so, uh, Please, did you even know my music? I, mean, I really, this is very, very interesting. You know, I, I, I tell you, you, you're such a busy lady. You know, I, I'm surprised you even had time to fool around with such trivial stuff. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you read the book. I'm a fountain of trivia. <laughs> <laughs> All right. and I took that and made a DNA. You know, I took the DNA of that and we went through the whole script. <laughs> and uh, sometimes Taylor would pull me back. He said, "No, you got to be higher. You got to be lower here." So we could take that DNA and kind of go through it to uh, change that voice, you know, change the, the, the spirit of the character. So that was a method of getting to it. Well, you know what, the fact is, King B, man, I really and truly love gospel, man. I mean, one of my favorite groups is from right here in Houston, uh, the Cecil Shaw singer. What I loved as an actor was his total commitment. Jamie Foxx committed to do this role blind. A lot of actors would say, well, I got dark glasses on, you know, to hell with it, I can just, you know, close my eyes. When you're with Ray Charles, occasionally he takes his glasses off and you're like, wow, you know, first of all, there's a vulnerability that happens. And we use that in the movie. And so we had to create a look for his eyes that really does replicate Ray's real eyes. We try so many different ways of making the eyes really look authentic and real, but we went through, uh, just glued the eyelids shut, which didn't work out. Uh, we went through synthetic 
prosthesis, like the rubber guy, which didn't work out. Then we went to finally went to the silicone. It was tough on the eyes, but at the same time, it was necessary because in his life, it's uncomfortable. You get angry because you can't see, you want to take them off, but you know you have to, you had to keep them, and I had to keep them on even during lunch. So I couldn't see from for 12, 14 hours a day, which really, really, really worked on me. And it was a fascinating moment when we were first working together and he was, he had his prosthetics on. And I was talking to him and there was a room full of people. Taylor goes, you all right? Yeah, I'm good. If you just tell that guy to quit tapping the pencil. What guy tapping the pencil? And you look over on the other side of the room, this guy tapping the pencil. Your hearing became acute. It was very, you know, you could hear everything, which, which also too could be, you know, it, it could be nerve wracking. Boy, are you blind? Yes, sir, since I was seven. Well, well, let me help you out then. This is a country band. We don't play no boogie woogie. Billy, don't get your feathers all ruffled now. I met this old boy over at the OC at Clark Field, and well, he plays a mean jazz piano. I got the rights to this film 15 years ago. I'm lucky that I didn't make it for 15 years because I wouldn't have had Jamie Foxx in the lead role. And Jamie it gave me this incredible gift. I can go from his hands to his mouth so that you just feel this is Ray Charles. It brings a tear into my Sometimes I'm doing two, occasionally three songs in a day. That means he's got to come in and just clock it. That meant that Jamie Foxx has to learn those songs perfectly. One, two, he has to learn the finger in the piano. It was like nights until I stayed up to like maybe 5.30 and having to be on the set at 6.30. You know, but I had to get that, you know, I had to get that part down so it looked authentic. I hadn't been a musician, there's no way we would have been able to do 96 cues of Ray Charles' music. So he's got to be there and be ready. And um, he did. The genius himself, Ray Charles! When you see this film, you are watching Ray Charles perform, because Jamie Foxx has made you believe that. Uh, here's a guy that was Hollywood, he was a star. All of these things coupled together, and at the same time, by him being blind, it was a lot of things that you had to layer and put into place until it finally turns on. It was very emotional for me to watch him on set because it was too real. The way he looked, and if he turned in the sun a different way, if he turned around and looked at me a certain way, he looked like my father. It's almost like he stepped into his skin. And I think he had to truly dig deep to do that. When you have actors watching him in his element, doing what he's doing, and we're saying, is that Ray Charles over there for real? Is that young Ray? Jamie was fantastic. With someone you know as well as Ray Charles, he's part of my soul for the last 57 years or so. And sometimes I couldn't tell the difference between Ray and Jamie. The whole day through. Just an old sweet song Keeps Georgia on my mind Georgia on my mind I said a Georgia he, he was such Georgia. the cool person in the fact that he was really trying to make sure I felt comfortable. When he talked to me, it was like talking to his son, and hopefully his son does good in the project, and that was what was great. I heard you, but now you're writing, writing now my day. Yeah. Oh, boy. And that's when you knew it was going to be great, because he gave his you blessing. You come around me, man. Because yeah, I want you to be singing. I love you. Yeah, sing, boy. That's one of the things that you can look back on your life and say, wow, life, a life is pretty good. Oh, there you go. <laughs>